Hey guys, today's topic is all about humanity's greatest achievement. Cheese. And unless you're lactose intolerant through genetic inferiority, there's really nothing like a good slice of cheese to brighten up your day. It comes in all kinds of flavors and textures too, like smooth, salty, and absolute garbage. But have you ever asked yourself, what is cheese? As appetizing as it sounds, cheese is just curdled milk. But which milk? Any milk, really, assuming that you have a healthy and legal supply. And once you have your fresh, delicious, hair-free milk, just let it outright spoil. No way, you say, but yes way. Curds and whey. Curds are the gross little floating pieces at the top, and whey is the milk sweat that's left behind. Add in some flavors to your curds, and voila, you have cheese. Of course, someone will say that the process is a little bit more complicated than that, and they'd be right, but this is a history video, so that begs the question, where did cheese even come from? Cheese is one of those inventions that was made by accident, like potato chips, post-its, and you. According to official historic cheese lore, a merchant in ancient Europe, or Asia, or some, somewhere in this area, stored milk for his travels in the best container he had at the time, a sheep's stomach. After a day of traveling in a hot desert, something magical happened. Good golly, am I thirsty, says the merchant, wiping sweat off of his brow. I can't wait to tear into this hot, delicious, refreshing milk. The merchant found that in addition to drinking his milk, which was now suspiciously salty, there were also some chunks to chew on as a snack, ruining the need for his provisions of Oreos. It turns out that the sheep's stomach contained rennet, an enzyme that delicately convinced the milk to change from a liquid to a solid. Word of this marvelous chewy milk spread far and wide, making cheese more popular than Jesus, who wouldn't exist for thousands of years. Earliest known evidence of cheese making dates back over 8,000 years in what is now Switzerland. I know, the Swiss making cheese, big shocker, right? But more evidence has been found all across the world, from the country of Africa to the continent of Italy. Since food preservation techniques back then were nothing more than just salting and drying, cheeses were often salty and dry. It would be a long while before cheeses that we know would start popping up. Cheddar was invented around the 1100s, Parmesan in 1597, and Gouda a century later. In today's world, there are over 2,000 types of cheese, ranging from white American cheese to edible. Some countries even formed cheese boards, which provides a sort of patent on their cheeses, basically saying, hey, this is my cheese. Go make your own. Just like how champagne can't really be called champagne unless it's from the Champagne region in France, Parmesan or Parmigiano Reggiano can't be called as such unless it's from that particular region in Italy. Lucky for me, I can just pick it up at my local grocery store. Checkmate Italy. All cheese types can be categorized into a basic system, organizing them based on their moisture content, like some kind of moist meter. First up, you have your fresh cheeses. These are your sloppiest mega wet cheeses like ricotta and mozzarella. Really good for making a nice calzone or some fresh Italian boba tea. Next up are the soft cheeses like brie and camembert. These cheeses are generally smooth and creamy and are good as spreads on like bread and stuff. Third are the semi-soft cheeses like provolone and Munster, which aren't as soft as the soft cheeses, otherwise they would be classified as soft cheeses. These are good for some good ass sandwich making. Fourth we have the semi-firm cheese, or as I like to call them, here you can find cheddar, gouda, or gruyere. Great for charcuterie parties and lunchables for the kiddos. Finally we have the fully erect hard cheeses like parmesan and asiago. Perfect for harassing your local Italian restaurant waitress, this grade is great for grading, and are typically your most flavorful cheeses as well as the most pungent. Just like gamers, the smellier it is, the better it is. It should be said that there is also a category of blue cheeses, for distinguished people who love the complex, bold, and sour flavors of actual mold. No matter the type of cheese you choose, culinary nerds will always tell you that you're not pairing it with the right complimentary food or drink in order to earn your first class ticket to Flavortown. Look, if I want to shove a handful of shredded mozzarella down my throat at 2 in the morning, then let me. Don't recommend to me that I wash it down with a 2012 Sauvignon Blanc, because I did that. But it was a beer. Nowadays, cheese is still enjoyed as a staple of modern cuisine all across the world, but mainly in France where it is typically served sliced with fruit or bread after a main course. In the cultural hub that is the United States, we serve it as an appetizer, sliced in a sort of stick shape where it is then breaded and fried, providing key nutrients for us to grow big and strong. Remember that no matter how you slice it, cheese is a delicious addition to any meal, so feel free to eat it to your heart's content. Eh, until it fails from all of the excess sodium. <laughs>